Back in the 80s when I was driving for O.C. Cook, me and Cheeseburger, another driver, we picked up a load of fire hydrants up here at Albertsville and we was taking them to Florida. We was on the south side of Atlanta on the 285 loop. And back then they had this big old hill, you know, right on the inside of the loop there where the planes would come in and they'd land. That runway would start right there at that hill. Then planes would fly right over the interstate before they'd catch the beginning of the runway. Now this is before they built that big tunnel down there. Anyway, we're cruising along, no Snyder. There's a plane getting ready to come in and land. No Snyder's looking at that plane. I grab my old mic and I go, Eagle to tire, Eagle to tire, request permission to land runway 387. And I went, permission granted. Anyway, he's looking up there at that plane. That old plane's getting ready to go right over across the interstate right in front of us. And I grabbed my old mic and I said, ladies and gentlemen, if you look out both sides of the plane, you can see the loop around Atlanta. And I said, look at all them truck drivers down there. And boy, old Snyder, he's looking up there at that plane. About that time that plane went by and you could see that captain up there moving his head in the cockpit. And I grabbed my old mic and I said, Snyder, what are you doing looking up here? Keep your eyes on the road. And boy, Snyder jerked that wheel and he come over there by my truck and like pushed me on the shoulder. Me and Cheeseburger laughing so damn hard, hell, we can't drive. He about put us in the ditch. And so anyway, we went ahead and went 75 south and we got down there at the scales down there at Foresight. Well, we'd made it through the scales and we pulled over and we was checking the chains on our load. There came that old Snyder truck coming across the scales and he got back out there on the big road and we jumped the trucks and we took off. We got out there on the big road and went around him. After we went around him, I said, how about that Snyder truck just come out of them southbound scales? And he said, yeah, go ahead. I said, was that you just come around that loop up there in Atlanta a while ago? And he said, yeah, I did. And I said, was that guy in that plane talking to you? And he said, yeah, he was. He goes, you at least think they'd go down to another channel. Well, about that time, this other driver in radio range, he goes, I ain't believing what I'm hearing. No cheeseburger grabs his mic. He goes, believe it, driver, I'm a witness. That Snyder driver thought them planes had CBs in them. And you can believe it or not, but that's a true story. Them drivers don't believe me when I tell them I used to use my truck motor to cook with, too. I used to have a 350 Cummins. You could take a can of chili, a can of beef stew, or a can of chicken dumplings. Put that in between that oil cooler and that motor. You're just laying up against that block of that motor, and you just close the hood, and you just drive down the road, and when you get ready to eat, that food's 190 degrees, nice and hot. Just open that can and pour it in a bowl, and you're ready to go. A lot of these companies nowadays, they don't even like drivers popping the hoods on them trucks. They got all these new motors, got these sensors on them. If the fluid levels get low, they automatically shut your truck down. Well driving down the road and your truck automatically shuts down you just pull over on the shoulder of the road and they'll take a Qualcomm reading and find out where you at or either that you can call them on the phone tell them where you at and they'll send a service truck out with a cup of water and get you going again and I never did carry chains on my truck if it's that bad if you gotta get out and put chains on your drives just to make it across the pass it's just too bad just shut that truck down. But what I did is them white bags that them chains come in, you carry them around in your side box for a while and they get all dirty and they make imprints of the chains on the bags. You know, you can see where there's chains on the bags. But anyway, what I did is I just took all them chains out of the bags and I stuffed them bags full of plastic chains. And what you do is you stack them clear in the middle of your side box. That way they can't reach in there and grab them. But DOT can open your side box and they look in there and they see them white bags with them chain marks on them. And they think you got your chains with you. And you can only do that if your side box goes all the way across. They like them kibbles and bits trucks. Them blue freight liners. They only got one side box door on the driver's side and down there at the bottom it says fire extinguisher inside but they abbreviate the word extinguisher so it looks like it says fire exit inside well, this driver's truck caught on fire one time he jumped out of the truck and he seen that sign he thought it said fire exit inside 
He opened his slide box up and jumped in his side box and closed the door. Didn't kill him though. He had permanent brain damage from all the smoke he inhaled, but they went ahead and kept him on as a dispatcher. What's up, Matt? 